Hi everyone, welcome back. It's me again, Ian, with more Audi TT Mark II mods and fixes. In this video, what I'll be explaining is how to upgrade your cluster from the older style red screen over to the white LED screen, which is more commonly seen in the Audi TT S and uh, later model cars. So what I'll be explaining is one of the several options on how to upgrade your cluster. Now I've been working on Audis and Volkswagens electrics for a few years now and my experience comes from a place where I kind of got stuck myself and I needed to figure out a way to get my car working again. Basically what happened is I broke my cluster and from there I was going to work in a few hours and I needed to figure out how to get a spare cluster working. And so I was furiously researching online and just trying different things to get this spare cluster to work. In the end I figured it out and I was able to get it to work just on time and I thought you know what if people need this kind of help I probably will be able to um, help people out with that knowledge. So with my old cluster out and the current new cluster that was coded in, I decided to do a couple of experiments just to make sure that what I was doing was indeed correct and I was able to hot swap or interchange those clusters around. The original car that I was talking about was an S38L. You can see that I have many videos uh, with that car that I've done many, many different things to. And uh, now all of that knowledge comes together and we'll be looking at how you can upgrade the cluster for your TT8J. Now this process isn't for the faint hearted and you will need some specialized tools. Just to set it straight, you can't do this with VCDS, so the Rostec cable. You'll need some specialized tools which I'll show you throughout the video. In the meantime, let's have a look at how you can do it with the immobilizer being turned off and then I'll show you an example of how this works by removing my white instrument cluster, replacing it with the red one, starting the car up and then swapping it back to the white one and starting the car up again. All right, let's get this cluster out of the parts car so I can do this little experiment. So you can see there's not much left to it. Pretty much stripped out. I've used a lot of the components from this car and it's been well worth buying. Right, so if you'd like to see how to take out your Audi TT Mark II cluster, there's a video up in the link above. So I'll just cut to the chase. Okay, welcome to the garage. There's a 3.6 TT. Follow my Insta if you've got it. So what I'm going to do is swap around these instrument clusters to show you what an immobilizer defeat can give you. So I've got the red needled cluster here and that has the red LCD screen in the middle. Installed in the car is the white LCD screen cluster. As you can see there. So I'm just going to quickly swap these out to show you that with an immobilizer defeat you're able to swap clusters around as freely as you want. That's the one that was installed in the car with a white LCD. This is the red LCD one. You can see that there is an earlier revision letter on the top here. That's a C. And the white LCD cluster is the F. There might be other revisions with different letters, but they're the ones that I've got here. So I'm going to swap the C cluster in now. Okay, so the C cluster is letters. I'll turn the screen on. Needle sweep, fully red screen. Same car, red screen. Now usually there would be an immobilizer light that would be flashing. Where would that be? I can't see where it should be here. Anyway, let's see if it flashes up at the beginning. No, it doesn't. 
So because I've got an immobilizer to feet, I should be able to and it runs. Hey, there looks to be an error. Oh, is that gone now? Yep, so it says safe in the corner there, so something in the in instrument is wrong with the coding, and there's also an ESP fault in the middle there, so that just needs adjusting so that those can be rectified. But otherwise, with an immobilizer defeat, you're able to swap your clusters around and not have to worry about it getting the engine uh, shut off because the immobilizer doesn't match. All right, so I've swapped white LED cluster back in. As you can see, that's installed again. Let's have a look and see what the sequence of lights look like on board. It's all the same lights come on. There's no flashing. Uh, there's no flashing immobilizer light to tell you that you can't start the car. And again, the car starts up fine. Our immobilizer defeating the ECU is one of the two options in how to be able to upgrade your instrument cluster from the red screen over to the white screen. The ESP errors can be fixed by going into the ABS control module and doing the basic settings on these four sensors using VCDS. So let's have a look and see what this whole immobilizer thing is when we're talking about Audi clusters. And this might not be the exact way that it works, but I, this is how I understand how it works anyway. So the immobilizer system in Audis and Volkswagens are split into different components of the car. Part of the immobilizer is in the ECU. Another part of it can be in the instrument cluster. Sometimes in some Volkswagens, it's in the comfort control module. And then another component of it is in the key as well. Now, what the ECU will be looking for is that different sets of data must match. Now, if one of these components doesn't have a matching set of data, your immobilizer light on the instrument cluster will probably be flashing. You can try to start the car up, but about one second later, the engine will die. When you scan the car for codes in the instruments and in the ECU control modules, you'll probably see an immobilizer blocked message coming from that uh, result of trying to start the car where one of those components don't match. Now one of the options that you can look into is to turn off that immobilizer in the ECU. What that essentially does is it tells the car that you know, it's able to just run whatever instrument cluster and whatever key is available. So it's essentially bypassing that immobilizer. Now, of course, you want, you're going to be doing this at your own risk because, you know, bypassing that immobilizer does have its consequences. All right, so we'll have a quick look at how we can overcome the immobilizer so that you can use any cluster in the car to have the engine run. First thing you'll need to do is gain access to the ECU and remove the metal lock that restricts access to the plugs. You can see how to do that by clicking the link above. Once the ECU has been removed from the car, you'll need to open it up to gain access to the motherboard. Now this can be quite tough, but I find some heat along the seals really helps and some good pry tools. Once you've got access to the motherboard, you can then read off the EEPROM chip in which the immobilizer data is in. Now this data does differ depending on what ECU you're working on, but essentially it's this code that needs to be changed. I won't cover the coding changes that are required, but I'll provide links in the description if you'd like to know what needs to be done exactly. 
Here's one of the special tools that's required for this kind of work. It's called the GQ 4x4. And what it does, it allows you to read that little chip that's in the bottom of the picture there. And it also allows you to modify the code and then write to it. If you found that process a little bit confusing or would like a little bit more clarity around what needs to be done, don't hesitate to write in the comments below and I'll reply with some answers. Otherwise, feel free to visit my Facebook business page at FIS or FIS Cluster Care where the link is in the description. Now if you liked that video and found it helpful, please remember to press the like button and most importantly, please subscribe to my channel. Once again, thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.